Hi everyone, welcome to Bits Connect. Today we are going to discuss the topic about transistor crystal oscillators. So this is the circuit diagram of the transistor crystal oscillator. So the transistor crystal oscillators are used whenever greater stability is needed. Like in communication transmitters and receivers and digital circuits or digital clocks, digital clocks etc like this. So coming to the circuit diagram, here we are taking the NPN transistor. Okay, so here, here the transistor R1 and R2. Coming to the construction of the circuit, the transistors R1 and R2 will provide potential divider bias and the emitter resistor RE. The emitter resistor RE is used to provide thermal stability for the NPN transistor and the C, C is nothing but emitter bypass capacitor. So this emitter bypass capacitor is used to bypass the amplified oscillation, amplified AC oscillations and if this emitter bypass capacitor is not used, the amplified oscillations will go through the emitter resistor RE to the ground. So that what will happen? The gain of the the gain of the oscillator is going to be reduced. Okay, now coming to the coupling capacitors. These coupling capacitors are used to allow AC signal and they are used to block the DC signal. Okay, now coupling capacitors are used to allow AC signal only and they are used to block the DC signal. Okay, so what is the output? We have to get the oscillations. Oscillations are nothing but AC signal. Okay, so coming to the radio frequency choke, what is the use of radio frequency choke? The radio frequency choke is used to allow DC signal and it is used to block the AC signal. So if, we, if you are not using radio frequency choke, the AC signal coming from the power supply will affect the output signal. Okay, now if you, if you are not using radio frequency choke, the AC signal coming from the power supply will distorts the output signal okay now so this is the circuit diagram and here this is the feedback path in here if you observe this feedback circuit this is nothing but tuned circuit and it is the feed, feedback path is the feedback circuit or tuned circuit is similar to the Colpitt's feedback path Colpitt's circuit Colpitt's oscillator feedback circuit so in place of in place of inductor we are connecting crystal Okay, now, so here the crystal is equivalent to the inductor in Colpitt's oscillator with parallel to the capacitor C1 and C2. Here the capacitor C1 and C2 connected in series and it is center tap to the ground. Okay, now, so this is the feedback path. Coming to the circuit operation, in crystal oscillators, the crystal will act as an inductor. Why? Because in transistor crystal oscillator, the tuned circuit, whatever we are connecting from the output to the input, the feedback path, here the tuned circuit is similar to the Colpitt's oscillator. So in place of inductor in Colpitt's oscillator, here we are connecting the crystal. It forms the parallel tuned capacitor, parallel tuned circuit with the capacitors C1 and C2. Here the positive feedback, the positive feedback is provided by the capacitive voltage divider. Okay, now, okay, so here whenever the power supply switch is on, what will happen? We will get the high frequency stability of oscillations. We will get the high frequency stability of oscillations. Okay, now, because, because why we have to get the high frequency stability of oscillations? Because here we are connecting the crystal. In place of inductor, we are connecting the crystal. Okay, now here the feedback path, the feedback path or feedback circuit will produce as the 180 degrees phase shift and another 180 degrees phase shift is provided because of the transistor amplifier circuit. So the total phase shift around the feedback loop is 360 degrees which is the condition for the sustained oscillations. Okay, so here for the crystal, if you take the crystal it has two resonant frequencies. If you take the crystal, it is having two resonant frequencies. First one is series resonant frequency. It is indicated by Fs. So, in this condition, the crystal impedance will be very low. Okay, now. 
in series impedance series resonant frequency fs so in this condition the crystal impedance is very low and another type of resonant frequency it is nothing but parallel resonant frequency it is indicated by fp what is the meaning of here here the crystal will provides or exists two types of frequencies produces the crystal will produces two types of frequencies what are those series resonant frequency parallel resonant frequency in series resonant frequency in this condition the crystal impedance is very low in parallel resonant frequency that is the parallel resonant frequency which is due to the parallel resonance of capacitance cm that is in the equivalent circuit of crystal you will get cm and reactance of the series circuit and the crystal impedance is very high okay that is nothing but in parallel fre resonant frequency what will happen the crystal impedance is very high and this is due to the parallel resonance of capacitance cm and the reactance of the series circuit will be very high in this condition the crystal impedance is very high so what are the two frequencies series resonant frequency fs it is equal to 1 by 2 pi root lc and parallel resonant frequency fp it is equal to 1 by 2 pi under root l into ct where ct is nothing but 1 plus c by cm okay now so these are the two resonant frequencies of the crystal so when you are switch on the power supply the circuit will provides high stability frequency high stability gain frequencies because in place of inductance we are connecting the crystal so this is the circuit operation coming to the advantages and disadvantages of transistor crystal oscillator advantages are they have high order of frequency stability so in the transistor if you are using crystal you will get high frequency stability of oscillations okay now okay now so that is nothing but high order of frequency stability so here the quality factor of crystal is very high compared to the lc tank circuit crystals that compared to the call pits and hot lay oscillators so the quality factor is about 10000 compared to about it is 100 for lc tank circuits okay and the frequency of crystal oscillator changes by less than 0.1 percentage due to the temperature and other changes so hence that what is happening here the stability is very high the crystals for crystal oscillators the stability is going to be very high coming to the disadvantages the crystal oscillators are fragile so the crystals they are easily to be broken that is the meaning of fragile and they are used in low power circuits that's why they are used in low power circuits if you are giving high power the crystal will gets damaged okay now so the frequency of oscillations cannot be changed okay now because it is a fixed frequency oscillators the crystal oscillators are fixed frequency oscillators we cannot change the frequency of oscillations so these are the two disadvantages of transistor crystal oscillators so the next topic is what are the reasons for instability in oscillator circuit instability means in the outputs of the oscillations the amplitude and frequency is going to be changed that is nothing but instability of oscillations that means the amplitude of the waveform sine waveform amplitude and frequency is varying okay now that is nothing but instability so what are the reasons for instability in oscillator circuit so variation in supply voltages okay now whatever we are giving for the circuits like hot, hot land call pits oscillator if you are varying the supply voltage there is an instability of oscillations so overheating of components and devices in the circuits so in the oscillator circuits we are using the device uh, components like resistors capacitors transistors and power supplies so overheating of these components and devices in the circuits also there is an instability in the output so load effect on the oscillator load effect means in oscillators the output of the circuit is again giving to the input by using the feedback network that is nothing by by using the tank circuit the output of the amplifier is again connecting back to the input of the transistor so that is nothing but loading effect because of that loading effect also there is an instability of oscillations so the variations in the oscillator parts oscillator parts nothing but tank circuit and uh, uh, 
CE transistor amplifier, power supplies. So these are the different parts. So if there is any variations in the oscillating parts, there is an instability. So temperature variations. Because of the temperature variations also, you will get the instability of oscillations. Low quality factor of tank circuit. If you use crystal oscillators, transistor crystal oscillator, the quality factor will be very high. That is about 10,000. By using uh, LC tank circuits, LC tank circuits of the oscillators, the quality factor will be very low. Okay, na? So, due to the low quality factor of tank circuits also, is there is an instability of oscillations and falls in the active devices. So, here we are using what are the active device? Transistor. If there is any fault in the transistor, there is an instability on our oscillators. So, improper biasing due to the wrong calculation of resistance values and C values. If you are not taking any proper values of resistance and capacitor values and there is an improper biasing, you will get instability in the oscillations. The changes in the components due to humidity. Okay, now if you are changing the components like compon uh, capacitor values and uh, compon uh, capacitor and inductor values will be replaced due to the humid humidity, the effect of the instability of the oscillations will get. So, improper tapping of the coils. Okay, now. So, if you are not tapping coil properly, it will get instability of the oscillation. So, these are the reasons for instability on oscillators.